All right, hopefully this is the culmination of it all. Um, we've got the laser enable signal plugged in there to the optocoupler. I, the optocoupler outputs are both up there on the left. There's the collector and emitter. And I think they did that so that you can do um, active high or active low laser depending on whatever suited you. You can also use those transistors which are have the emitter shorted to ground. Um, I noticed that you absolutely have to, at least for now, um, there might be a detail I'm missing, you have to have the laser enable switch off or the engraving switch off when you power it on because the high impedance outputs um, on the embed when you boot it cause the laser to fire at boot up. Um, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe I, I might have that wrong, but it's not a good deal. So that's absolutely something that has to be fixed for safety. Um, but for now, you know, I just want to know if the laser's working. So we're going to do the same Hackaday logo. I've got a fresh piece of cereal box. You can see there, <laughs> that's the, um, the mark from when the uh, machine turned on and the laser started firing right away. And um, yeah, so I'm going to click execute again. We're going to download that same engraving and then try it out with the laser. Uh oh. That is not a good sign. Well, I think it crashed my embed. All right, well, that's going to be a fun one to figure out. Okay, I added the config file on the embed to enable logging to a file. Um, I'm going to turn the machine back on, and I'm going to try to etch that logo one more time and um, hopefully the logs can reveal something. Uh, my fear is that there's enough EFI or ground hash or some kind of a signal integrity issue going on with the power supplies that it's glitching the microcontroller, which sucks. Um, because the inputs and outputs are all either galvanically isolated, the motors, you know, don't electrically connect, the windings don't electrically connect to anything, the end stops are optocouple protected, and the only other connection with the machine is the laser output, which is optocouple um, protected, means that um, I could power the the embed on its own just completely independent power supply and that might be the thing I do if this test fails again so I'm going to turn it back on let it boot and then I'm going to try that image again so I have the engrave button still off so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on Okay, so see how it's stepping there? The old controller was doing the same thing, but this time I can control the current and I can also 
um, control the acceleration and the speed. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I don't have the fume extraction on. Oh. Yeah, we're crashed again. Yep, I think I maybe have <laughs> not given Moshi Draw enough credit. It's probably a power supply stability problem. But again, at least with the Laos board, I can do something about it. All right, it's the next day. Um, I spent some time on the forums. I'm not the first person to have the problem. There's three potential causes. There's an issue on the, the wiki that gets into it. So um, I squared C with the display has been causing some people problems. Um, possible power corruption on 5 volts and heavy Ethernet communication. So I've got that 54G that I talked about in the other video. It's acting as a router, so there's practically no communication over the Ethernet. So that's not the issue. Um, I went ahead and I removed the 24 volt and 5 volt connections. That's just ground and laser on. And that goes to the opto coupled outputs. We've got the laser on going to the collector and ground going to the emitter. So that should be completely isolated um, electrically. And then um, the motors again are isolated just by the nature of them being stepper motors. They don't have um, any kind of connection to the case or the ground. And then um, the how, how did that foul up? Um, and then the end stops are um, grounded to this board, but they're not connected to anything else inside. And then I've got the 24 volts and 5 volts that I used to test the Moshi board on the bench hooked up to the bench supply, which I brought in here. So I'm going to be powering the Moshi board and the motors off the bench supply, and only the laser will be powered with the laser supply, well, and the light, but who cares. Only the laser will be on the laser supply with galvanically isolated control signal. So my hope is that we don't see any more of those problems. Um, I also eliminated, I took the I2C display, I unplugged it, removed it from the loop, it's not plugged in over there either. So I've basically addressed all three of the problems and um, all three of the possible remedies. So um, I'm gonna turn it on now. So let's do 24 volts, 5 volts. Okay. This uh, embed is booting. Right, I don't have the feedback of the LCD anymore, but the embed is booting, and in a minute it should home. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so it just homed. Um, it should be ready to accept commands. And just as an experiment, I'm actually going to run a job without turning the laser on at all. Um, I'm not expecting anything to go wrong, obviously. But this will give me a good basis to say the one variable I'm changing is turning the laser on. So I'm going to get that set up and then we'll check it out. Alright, so I guess I didn't think about the fact that um, when I click execute in VisiCut without the LCD display, it kind of just goes for it. And obviously that, you know, makes sense, but um, I didn't think to push record before I click send. So anyways, it's doing um, the Hackaday logo, 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. I haven't heard any weird steps at all, and it seems to be going just fine. So I'm going to let this continue, and then when it's done, I'm going to turn on just the laser power supply, but still not enable engraving. 
All right, that worked just fine. Um, I've got the machine on now. Um, this, I'm pretty sure that the engrave button, yeah, the engrave button is still disabled. So I'm going to do that again, and um, hopefully it behaves exactly the same. Now for real. Got the engrave on. Laser works. Let's give her a shot. We're nowhere near the current that I should really be at. So I'm going to increase it just a bit. You have to be careful increasing the current while it's engraving though because um, analog meters do the average and if it's not engraving very much you can turn the current up during the average which would be too much when it's on. Okay, safety on. That is fantastic. I am absolutely ecstatic about that. So, one thing I can do though is test. Okay, so I'm actually getting decent. When I do the test, it's where it should be. But that's not a very deep engrave. Um, also, you can see the edges are darker than the center, and I think what's happening there is that um, the acceleration setting on the stepper motor going back and forth is um, if the head is slower at the ends as it's starting to slow down to change direction, and so the laser is having more time on the material on these edges. Um, so I can add, VisiCut has a setting to add a greater band on the sides of the engrave to speed up and slow down basically. Um, so I might use that. Um, also I think that I'm engraving faster than I did before so the same power setting is not getting so deep. So I think on that note, I'm going to call this video finished. I really have no idea how long this one ended up being. It spanned four or five days um, shooting material. Um, again, I don't know if it's the display or the lab power supply, but uh, my wife has been saying that I need to actually <laughs> cut some stuff out for Christmas on it. So. I think I'll have to solve those problems later on, and for now I just need to be happy that it's working. So uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, I, I'm sure there will be more. So please subscribe and thumbs up. Thanks again.